This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. So one of the most common questions I get on pretty much all of my customization videos is how do I go about making a change to a widget or an icon so that I can make my home screen setup look more unique? And if that is you asking that question, then this video is your one-stop shop to making that happen. So we're gonna take a look at a standard default straight out of the box looking home screen setup. And then we're gonna do a deep dive and unpack how to make it look super eye-catching and unique using a whole range of different customization techniques. And this will get you on your way to achieving that highly customizable home screen look and feel. These steps will apply to pretty much any customization friendly launcher that you come across, but let's cut the chat and dive straight in. So here we are, we've got the phone in place, we're ready to go, but before we get onto the step-by-step, -step, it's worth mentioning that for this walkthrough, I'm gonna be using version two of the Launch Air Launcher, but as long as you're using a launcher that offers customization flexibility, then you should be good to go for pretty much all of this tutorial. So let's start with some general launcher customization things to keep in mind when customizing a home screen setup. Firstly, in terms of grid size, this is a key setting to tweak and play with depending on the home screen you're going for. If you're looking to feature a high amount of app icons on your home screen, then you want a fairly high grid size setting here, something like eight by nine or thereabouts. And I like to ensure that the width is always an odd number as this means you can have app icons directly in the middle of the screen, which I've found helps to create the most symmetry within my setups. Below that, we've got a setting called overlapped placement. And if you're looking to really amp up your home screen's customization, then you want to make sure that this setting or the equivalent in the launcher that you're using is switched to on. This basically means that if you've got a widget that you want to fit into your home screen, but there are icons in the way or vice versa, then having this switched on means you won't have to worry about accidentally changing the position of everything else within the setup if you move the widget or the icon too far one way or the other. The other setting you want to change is this add icon to home screen toggle. A lot of launches do have this on by default. And if you have it on, it basically means anytime you download and install a new app, it will show up on your home screen. And this can definitely mess up your page layout if you leave it on and therefore potentially your wallpaper positioning as well. So best to make sure that you set this toggle to off. Finally, have a think about whether or not you wanna have the status bar set to visible or hidden. A lot of people prefer a hidden status bar for a cleaner home screen. However, I've tended to leave mine set to visible for most of my setups, but this is just a preference thing and it will depend on what other widgets you have on your home screen. Okay, moving into customizing your icon packs. Now, for a lot of the setups that I see, they may use one or two different icon packs for the icons on the home screen itself, but then a different icon pack altogether for the apps in the app drawer. So there are a few things to keep in mind in order to pull this off. Firstly, within the launcher settings, there will be a setting for an overall icon pack. Now, even if you're wanting something different for the home screen, I highly recommend setting this up to be the icon pack you want seen within the app drawer, primarily because that will more often than not be the area of your setup that has the most amount of icons. So it will save us a lot of effort to let the launcher customize those icons rather than us having to do it one by one. So I've set my overall icon pack to use icons from the Crichton icon pack, but let's say I now wanna use a different icon pack altogether for my home screen icons. To get this working, I'm gonna long press an icon, tap on edit, and then select the icon itself. From here, I can select a different icon pack and then manually find any icon that I like the look of. So you can use this process to create some really minimal designs if you choose your icons carefully, a popular style being this clean dot icon look using icons from the Candy Cons icon pack. In some launches, you can take this a stage further by manually customizing the actual folder icons themselves. And this means you can hide lots of apps on a home screen just by setting up a custom folder icon. Unfortunately, you can't yet do this in LaunchAir V2, but this has been a popular feature that Nova Launcher has had for some time, and it's why it is used in so many setups. Another thing to keep in mind when thinking about icon packs is app names and labels. And generally speaking for a home screen, you wanna find this setting and toggle it to off. I can't really remember a well-designed home screen that has featured app labels visible on the home screen. They really do tend to take away from what could be an otherwise clean looking desktop. So I highly recommend leaving this setting off. And the last setting to consider when it comes to icons is the icon size itself. I personally like to keep my icons fairly small, something around the 75% mark, as I feel this allows things to look even neater, which is my style. And really the bigger you go, the more risk you take in your desktop looking and feeling cramped and cluttered. So play around with the scale of your icons and find something that works for you. 
Okay, so before we press on to the widgets portion of this video, I just wanna quickly mention today's sponsor, Squarespace. Now, if you didn't already know, I actually already have a website which you can view at samuelbeckman.com and I actually set this up a fair while ago using Squarespace. And so when they reached out to see if they could sponsor my channel, I was like, um, yeah, yeah, you can. So choosing Squarespace for my website was an absolute no brainer. They have by far the best looking templates, which are also really easy to customize as well. And you can even install multiple templates on your site and switch between them to make sure you've got a design that you're really happy with. What's great is that each template also automatically includes a mobile optimized version as well, which is super important given how many people browse the internet on their phones these days. They also have an inbuilt online store, an e-commerce service, which I'm definitely interested in setting up and using in the future myself. And they also made it ridiculously easy for me to set up my own domain. I personally found the website setup process super easy and I'm certainly no web coder or anything like that. So I reckon you'll find it really easy as well. But if you do need even more help, then you also have access to their award-winning 24 seven customer service as well. If you're looking to make your own website, then definitely head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash Sam Beckman to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, now taking a look at widget customization. Whilst there are plenty of applications that have their own inbuilt widgets, which you can find by long pressing an empty space on your home screen and selecting the widgets option and just having a scroll through this list, the main two applications that will offer the most flexibility and probably the best looking widgets as well are KWGT and Zupa widget. Now, KWGT is still active and alive on the Google Play Store. However, Zupa Widget and Zupa Widget Pro were sort of left inactive for years with no updates whatsoever. And eventually both were removed from the Play Store, meaning you can actually only get this app from third-party APK websites. Most widget developers have moved their widget packs over to KWGT, which is great. But if you have purchased some Zupa Widget packs in the past, as a lot of us have, then you may wanna look into downloading one of those third-party Zupa Widget APKs. So let's look at how we can actually set up and customize a widget using both KWGT and Zupa widget. So firstly, I'm gonna create a blank KWGT widget on my home screen by long pressing the desktop, selecting widgets, and then scrolling down and selecting one of the options under custom widget. Now, to be honest, you can really select any widget size here because you can just customize it later on, but I like starting off with something fairly small such as one by one or two by two, and then scaling it up if need be. So let's do a two by two widget and we'll drag and drop that to the desktop. And once I've done that, we'll be presented with a black rectangle that says click to set up or long press to resize. I do first want to resize it. So I'm going to long press it and then release. And you'll see this bounding box appears and we can grab one of the four circles and adjust the size by dragging and releasing them as need be. So I'm going to stretch this particular widget out to the edges of the screen, just so I know there's plenty of space. And so it's perfectly centered on my desktop. Once I've got the right size, I'm now gonna tap on the rectangle which will launch into the KWGT app. So under the install tab is where you'll see any of the templates you've downloaded from the Google Play Store. And then under the exported tab is where you'll see templates you've exported yourself in case you made changes or manually set up your own widgets altogether. So I'm gonna to navigate to the installed tab and select one of these widget packs up the top. This one in particular is called Watermelon for KWGT. And I'm gonna scroll down and find this particular date and weather widget that I like. I'm gonna tap on that and it will launch into the editor portion of the app. So I can leave this widget as is if I like, hit save, and it will appear on my desktop exactly like this. But a lot of the time you wanna customize these widgets to make them look a little bit more your own and therefore unique. So I'm gonna tap that widget again and it will launch back into the editor. So down the bottom is where we can make pretty much any change we want to our widgets. And up the top is obviously our preview of these said changes. Now I'm only gonna show you some basic customization here. Otherwise this video would go for hours potentially. But if you are looking for some more advanced tips and tricks, then Google is definitely your friend. So I'm gonna start by tapping on this stack group down here. And then we get two more groups that show up. I can see the top overlap group is the yellow hexagon on the left. And the bottom group is all the text on the right. I'll start by customizing the text by tapping on that bottom overlap group. And here you can see all of the text layers show up. Firstly, I wanna remove the word hello, which is the layer up the top here. So I'll tap the little checkbox over on the right and then tap the trash can icon up the top. And there you go, it's gone. Now let's say I wanna change the color of all of these text layers so that they are black instead of white. I'm gonna to have to do that manually one by one by tapping on each of the text layers, jumping over to the paint layer and then tapping on where it says the color code and by moving the color picker around to my desired color, which in this case is black. Then tap the check mark and then back and then repeat the process with the other text layers. 
Now I want all of these text layers moved back into the center portion of the widget. And I can actually do this all at once by swapping over to the position tab. And I'm gonna increase the bottom padding until it lines up to where I want it. So that's the text layer sorted. Now I wanna head back to where I can see the two overlap groups again, and I'm gonna make some slight changes to the hexagon. So I'm gonna tap on that hexagon overlap group layer, and I just wanna scale this down a bit to match the text a little better. So I'm gonna swipe over to the layer tab and then scale down the two layers at the same time. Once I'm happy with that, the last thing I wanna do is set this entire widget up so that when I tap on it, it launches into the Google weather feed. So I'm gonna navigate back to the first stack group view and swipe over to the touch tab. And I'm gonna tap on this first option that comes up and then this first option that comes up again. And here you can select whatever works for you, but I'm gonna select the launch app option. Now I'll tap the second option below that. And here I can select any app installed on my phone. And for this example, I'm gonna select the frog weather shortcut. And that's it for customizing this particular widget. I'll tap the save icon up the top, go back to my home screen, and and there is the finished product matching the changes I made within the app. Now, because I've changed the toggle shortcut when tapping on the widget, if I wanna make any additional changes, I'll have to navigate back to the KWGT app in my app drawer to make said changes. The last thing you might wanna do once you're happy with your changes is export the preset. And I can do that by tapping the menu icon up here and then on export preset, change the name if I'd like, and then by tapping on export. This means if I ditch this setup at one point in the future, but I wanna restore that same customized widget, then I can easily do so by finding it under the exported tab. Now it's a super similar process for Zuper widgets. You set up a widget on the desktop, then select the pack you want, and then the widget itself. And then to make any customizations, you tap on the layout option. From there, find and select the layer that you wanna make a change to, tap on it, and then all the settings are there. You may wanna swipe down a little bit to see all of the options, but for the most part, each setting is fairly self-explanatory. If you wanna set up a tap action, then come back to the main widget settings view, tap on widget on tap action, and then generally speaking, you wanna select an app from the app list or a shortcut from the shortcut list. Once you're finished, you just head back to the home screen and the changes should update automatically within the next few seconds. If you wanna export a Zuper widget, you simply tap on the save icon, set a name, and then hit save. And that's really it for customizing template-based widgets. If you wanna create widgets from scratch, then I'll leave some helpful tutorials down in the notes below. So now into the last section of this walkthrough, a couple of quick tips and tricks to consider when creating your own home screen. First, the dock, that's this row of apps that appears at the bottom of your home screen and it will stay persistent no matter what page you swipe to. If you're looking to make a super unique and minimal home screen, my general advice would be to switch the dock off and instead set up a row of apps down there yourself that may look like a dock, but won't limit your secondary pages should you have them. From there, think about perhaps organizing your app drawer into either folders or tabs if your launcher supports it. And if not, then perhaps your launcher supports hiding apps from the app drawer. And if so, I highly recommend hiding any apps that you don't use regularly, particularly customization apps such as Icon or Widget Packs, given that you never really use these apps themselves. You only really use their functionality within other apps such as the launcher you use or the KWGT or Super Widget apps. So cleaning up and organizing the app drawer is always a worthwhile thing to keep in mind. Then always worth having a look into the gestures portion of your launcher settings. If your launcher supports them, that is, you can add in some really neat functionality by utilizing gestures. And some of the key and most basic ones that I use are double tapping to launch into a global search, swiping down to open the notification panel and swiping up to open the app drawer. And finally, one of the really cool things about most launchers these days is that they let you save backups of your customized home screens. This means if you're experimenting and changing your setups a lot, or you wanna submit one of your setups to my home screen setup series, then you can navigate to your backup section, create a backup with a unique name, and then you'll have that file ready to go at any given time. Within the launcher itself, you'll be able to see the backup file then and there ready to restore. But if you wanna send your backup file to me, then navigate to a file manager application on your phone, go to your internal memory, and then if you're using LaunchAir, your backup file will go into the documents folder and then LaunchAir and then backup. But if you're using Nova Launcher, then your backup file will go into the data folder, under the Nova Launcher folder, and finally into the backup folder upload that exported backup file to Google Drive or just email it to me directly. And that is part of the submission process. And if you wanna see the entire submission process, then I'll leave a link to that video below. But that is it. That was your deep dive on how to customize pretty much any home screen setup and make it look super unique and appealing. If you see anyone commenting on any of my videos asking, how are you doing what you're doing? Then feel free to point them to this video if I haven't already. Let me know if you have any other tips and tricks as to how you customize your own home screen setup down in the comments below. But aside from that, if you're now wanting a heap of inspiration as to what a setup could look like, then I have heaps of videos on my channel that cover that topic exactly. So make sure you check out the playlist linked here, but that is it. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you later.